to check that out and make sure we're there. I confirm we are live streaming. All right, here it comes. Official welcome to Peggy. Um, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Fierce Awakened Woman 2022 Creativity Jam, where we are sharing ideas and rituals and practices that help us make and move and dance and be free as we fall into like a meditative, creative flow. And this space we've been doing it all day long we're going all weekend long and we're just exchanging ideas in a way that elevates all of us so feel that you are coming into this safe container i'm jen balco by the way founder of always on my way and host of the fierce awakened woman conference and wherever you were today maybe for me it's friday evening already it's friday afternoon Maybe where you are, it's still morning, but just begin to roll in all of your awareness from wherever it was, all of your attention, whether you were working on a project or dealing with family stuff or health or just thinking about dinner tonight, just let that all stay outside of the room for now. It'll be there when you get back and just roll it all back in for us so that you can hear and experience whatever's going to come through in this moment. Every speaker here has a different flavor of creative expression that they're sharing a different expression of joy that they're sharing so tune in with your heart with your mind with your ears with your eyes with all your senses find a comfortable place to sit or stand if you know however feels good for you today and now i'm going to bring peggy officially into the space hello peggy i see that you're already got sage going sage and um sweet grass the sage typically is regarded as um if you put herbs in male masculine feminine the the sage is more of the masculine aspect and the sweet grass is the feminine so it's always good to burn them both when you can ah i didn't i didn't see i learned something new from peggy all the time every time i'm in space with her in container but someone else taught me that so <laughs> well, thank, thank you for bringing it into our space and before we we learn more from peggy she's going to take us on a great journey and she'll tell us a little bit about it soon but let me just tell you a little bit about peggy um and her special way of being in the world peggy reader moore has listened to the voice within and followed the guidance to unusual and amazing paths during her spiritual journey. She pursued academic degrees in behavioral sciences, world religions, history, and education. And she sought ancient wisdom through metaphysics, meditation, and indigenous spiritual practices, including the pre-Celtic, old Irish ways, with an Irish medicine woman, and deeper studies with an Egyptian Sufi mystic. Her heart's calling has taken her on spiritual journeys to mounds, standing stones, temples, and sacred sites in several countries with extensive exploration in Ireland and Egypt. Personal pilgrimages as well as leading formal tours have informed and expanded her lifelong energy work of holding space for the healing of people, Mother Earth, and her beings. Even before her spiritual journey totally consumed her career, energy work and healing flowed through her traditional jobs, first as a teacher with adolescents with emotional disorders, later as an administrator of residential treatment programs, 
and eventually as a university professor and teacher education. Today, her work focuses on energetic expansion through spiritual education in her Mother Earth sacred tour business. In 2020, she produced the summit Mother Earth's Sacred Sites, Portals to Spiritual Awakening, that you can find at her website, it's still available, at www.MotherEarthSacredSites.com, all one word there, MotherEarthSacredSites.com. Currently, she teaches classes and seminars in meditation, spiritual development, Celtic spirituality, Egyptian studies, and sacred sites, and is a practitioner of time healing, oh, sorry, timeline healing therapy. She conducts ceremonies for the Eightfold Celtic Holy Days, which she just did recently um, with the new moon, and leads uh, sacred journeys to Ireland and Egypt. You can connect with Peggy and find additional information about everything going on in her world at that website I just mentioned called MotherEarthSacredTours.net. Did I get that right, Peggy? Yeah, yeah. MotherEarthSacredTours.net is the... It. The current the current website, yeah. Yeah. The summit is on the other one. Oh. Um Peggy, what are we doing today? Where are you taking us? Oh. Well, I'm just I'm so excited to be here with you. I love, love, love that you do this and, and it is so wonderful. So I want to talk a little about about weaving our energy. I love to I love to to weave the Celtic and the Egyptian uh, studies together. I love to weave, you know, we, we always are weaving our lives. And so I want to do that today. And um, let me start with a quote from um, a friend of mine, um, Dottie Lamore, who's an Akashic record reader. And uh, I ran across this in one of her writings. And she said, you don't have to swim upstream this is not a requirement of the human experience. <laughs> Instead, follow your heart. Create space for playing, loving, and new experiences to fill your life. Welcome new opportunities, ideas, and directions from Dottie Lamore. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I, in that first slide, I remember reading that too and saying, yeah. It's not going upstream is not a requirement of the human experience. Yeah, not a requirement. Yes, yes. And so my my backdrop is my art room, basically. Um, you know, this is Amsterdam, and you can't really see that one. Italy. This is North Carolina, but they're they're all just things that I've done. You know, as a part of of sacred travel. And um, so what I'd like to do with us is open with. Um, with calling of the directions and if you will um give me just a minute here let me move my screen around sure. so that you can oh, see me yeah. this is um peggy i love when you call in the directions they never feel the same when i do them but somehow being held by you as you call in directions always feels so magical i guess as well oh, thank you I'm glad you're calling and starting that way for us. Hold on, I'm gonna remove my own spotlight here for a second so that everybody can see you properly. All right. Um, can you hear me well enough from here? Yes, I, I, I can hear you. Talk just for another second longer and let me see. All right, and I'll try to, to speak louder now that I'm back away from the microphone. What I wanna do with the directions is a body prayer. And so I will show you just a couple of them so you'll know what I'm doing. Um, the first two are their yoga moves that are part of the warrior stance. And I'm gonna turn sideways so you can see me, but as I will start with the West, which is not usually where we start on the wheel, but I have a reason for it. And it's you put one leg out in front of you, bending that knee ever so slightly, and then you hold your arms up. And uh, I'll do that and then reverse legs, you know, the same way. And then when I go to, that's for the west, and when I go to the north, um, my body is facing west, my leg goes out, my arms go out, and my head turns to the north to hear the ancestors of the North speak to us. And then I'll turn to the East, which is basically the mountain pose. And then I'll show you what I'll do in, in the South. 
So um, just let me get back so that you can see me. And if you would like to, I would love for you to join me with this. Uh, I'll talk it through so you can sort of know where I am with it. Uh, and as always, we start with the center. And I lift my arms in the shape of a chalice so that my body is the stem and my arms become the cup, the cauldron, the chalice, and say, thank you, divine light. Thank you, thank you, thank you for pouring your blessings into the chalice and into us and out to all the earth. And I start today with calling the West as I put one foot out in front of the other and bend that knee and I raise my arms to the ancestors. And there in the West is Sekhmet and the Morrigan, the Morrigan of the Celtic line, Sekhmet of the Egyptian. And they stand in the West calling us to come and sit in introspection with the ancestors to listen to their words. And changing legs, the black bear comes to greet me. She takes me into her cave and she says, sit and listen, meditate and pray. And I say, thank you, energies of the West. And to the north, my body faces west remembering those teachings from the ancestors as I turn my leg to the north, point my arms toward the north and turn my head. And as I turn, there is Ma'at and Danu calling me to stand up as warrior of the heart, calling me, challenging me, asking me, Will you follow the path that you chose before you came to earth? Will you truly stand up as warrior of the heart? And I turn so that my other arm goes in that direction as well. And white buffalo woman greets me. White buffalo woman comes to teach us how to pray, to teach us how to live in ceremony. And she surrounds us and enfolds us and says, come. And I say, thank you, ancestors of the North. Thank you, thank you. And I turn to the East with my arms lifted toward the rising sun. And if you like, lift your, your feet, lift on your toes as you lift your arms and gather in that bright illumination. And I say, thank you, ancestors of the East, as you pour that beautiful light down on us and illuminate our path, our path of today, of this gathering, but our path of life. Thank you, ancestors of the East. And I turn to the South. The South. Ooh, the South is the direction of love and laughter and joy and dance and rhythm, which is what we're doing today. And in the South, we'll do what's called the breath of joy. The breath of joy, you lift your arms, hands up, drop your arms, hands down with arms out, lift your arms straight above. And as you bring your arms back down, you breathe with a whoosh, the breath of joy, hands up. Thank you, ancestors of the South. Arms down and out again, hands down. Thank you for calling us. Thank you for leading us. Arms up. Thank you for the light and the love and the joy. Whoosh. And we'll do that breath of joy one more time. Breath up with the hands up breath out with the hands down, breath in as you rise up and whoosh that breath out. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And back to the center saying thank you ancestors, thank you. 
All right, I'll come back to my desk now. If you give me just a minute to get re-situated. There we go. Yeah. So, oh, well, what a wonderful day this is. And I'm, I'm grateful for each one of you who joined us today. I'm happy, happy, happy that you're there. And um, if you have questions or comments as we go through this, I'm going to share my screen in just a minute and, um, you know, put your, your comments in the chat. And uh, if we have time, we'll go back and, you know, and, and talk a little bit about those. Uh, but creativity is what we're about today. Creativity and joy and laughter and weaving, weaving all that. Even though the world is upside down, we still have to weave our lives with joy because all that upside downness is a part of life too. So we weave it all together and ultimately come out on the side for for joy the side of love of divine love of reaching out and reaching up and and connecting with that divine love so let me uh let me share my screen and uh i think let me move it over i'm not sure if some of it is hidden from you it, it was on my screen anyway and so here we are with the fierce awakened woman for 2022 and we're doing it we're talking about weaving joy and love and laughter into our life's journey on the medicine wheel and today we're going to focus on the south where we attune to that love and, and joy and laughter and I'll talk a little bit about the Celtic ancestors Bridget and the Oren Moor and the Egyptian ancestors Hathor and the Phoenix. Okay, now the Phoenix, you probably have all heard of the Phoenix. That's a Greek translation of the Bin Bin bird that originated, the legend originated in Egypt. And it was called the Bin Bin bird, the fire bird that rises from the fire. Well, the Greeks took it and we all think that the Phoenix came out of Greece. <laughs> So, but we're going to celebrate that as well as we go through this today. So the South winds um, are, and, and the ancestors of the South call to us. The South is a place for healing and for growing and for singing and dancing. Ah, the flow of life, the music of life. And it's the place where the storyteller sits, the place where the storyteller opens up to the mystery of life and calls us to come into our own creativity. It's also the South is a youthful place where we remember that youthful bliss, but we incorporate it with our wisdom, with maturity, because the South is really a place for expansion and for leadership and accomplishment. So join me on this this journey as we go into this beauty. This is actually a photograph that I took of the rising sun at, at, on the Atlantic Ocean at the beach. And I thought, wow, this is a perfect picture for, for the sun, even though in the South we call it the midday sun. This is a sunrise, but the color was just perfect for it. So the South is that midday sun, and it really represents the center of our being. It's, it's the center of our life energy and our divine connection. So we say that it's about life energy and positivity and clarity. It's about confidence. It's about waking up and being motivated. And the South brings us the energy of the fire. So let's dance a little with this fire. I want you to use your creativity to build a phoenix. Okay. So this is a picture. This actually was taken in Ireland where they had built this phoenix and were at a ceremony to set it on fire. 
So look into yourself right now and find those things that you think are holding you back or things that no longer help you on your spiritual journey. There are things like fear and anger and pain and resentment and grief and regret. So think about those things, gather them in, bring them in. Anything that holds you in inertia, bring it in. The I should do this if only they cause me to any of that stuff. Bring all that in and take each piece of that and imagine that as a piece of wood, a thin piece of wood that we're going to use to build our phoenix, much like the one in the picture. Got those pieces? Oh, look what we've built. Whoa. There's that strand of regret. Oops, there's a little piece of anger. There's that, oh, they did this to me. Think of all those things that you've put into this now. All right, are you ready? We're setting it on fire. We're burning. We're burning all those pieces that you've put into it. We're burning all those things that no longer serve you because we held on to those things because they fit some emotion that we had. It's time to let go and really become who you came here to be. Your soul knows who that is. So stand back. The Phoenix has burned. The Phoenix is rising up. Shake it off. Shake your body right now. Shake those ashes off you. Let them go. Let them go and stand back. Stand back and look at what you have released. Ready to see it? From the ashes, the Phoenix begins a new dance. And as growth comes, she rises and she flies toward a new day, toward new opportunities. And those little pieces you put together, you know, they may try to come back in. But if you can become aware of them, then you can begin to set them aside. You didn't today burn them up and they never come back again but maybe you've become a little more aware of those things that you hold on to that block your growth. So the ancestors of the South are with us. And as we create with fire energy, they come and stand with us and they come and speak to us. I'll be beside you as you create fires from Flint, as you struggle with wet kindling, as you build great fires, as you build roaring bonfires, as you walk on hot coals, and even as you walk through the fire, I'll be beside you. So know that they're with you. They, the fire and the south winds and the ancestors call us to growth. They call us to rhythm. They call us to harmony. And so those south winds vibrate with the music of life, the rhythm, the sound, the tone. This is a sacred circle dance tour uh, that I was on in Egypt. And we're dancing at the Red Pyramid. <sighs> what an incredible place to be to let that harmony flow and let that rhythm come through your body. So hold on to those sacred thoughts and those sacred places and go with the dance of life. And Hathor, we usually call her Hathor, but the Egyptian name, that's Hathor, again, is the Greek translation of Hathor. So Hathor, the Egyptian goddess, is the goddess of love and music and dance and pleasure and nourishment and healing. She's also a sun goddess, and that's the disc that's above her head. There's all sorts of imagery in this picture, but the disc is because she's a sun goddess. And in her hand, she has a sistrum, a rattle. 
The sistrum is her instrument that she uses to drive evil from the land and inspire goodness. Her fiery energy is assertive and courageous and confident. And sometimes we really need to hear from her and, and draw on that energy from her. She shakes that system to strengthen our will and to heal and balance our mind, our body, our soul. Uh, music and sacred dance can lead us into ecstasy. And ecstasy is really an external, a physical experience of being in the present of the oneness, of that divine light, of that divine energy. Sacred music and sacred dance can transcend that ego and heighten our conscious awareness. Ecstasy stimulates the nervous system and that allows our non-physical vibration, our energy, to flow through our physical body. So I have a picture of a friend of mine in Egypt in ecstasy. There she is. <laughs> this is my friend Rania one day when we were at the pyramids and she was spinning, arms out spinning with such joy because we hadn't seen each other in, in a while. And oh, it was such a beautiful experience. And that's part of what ecstasy is the joy, the letting go of everything else and living in joy. So the Sufis um, really are about ecstasy. Uh, you might have participated in a static dance or trance dance or sacred circle or the dances of universal peace that's connected to the Sufis. The Sufis listen to the music and let the rhythm move their bodies into a sway, into a movement that goes into this ecstasy. Rumi, that you probably have heard of, you know, introduced the whirling dervishes into the world. And in Egypt, they do the whirling dervish, but they're called Tandora dancers. Now, the Tandora dancers, I, I'm going to share with you this little short video that I, that I took. Unfortunately, I couldn't get my camera rolling fast enough, but these hoops that you see up in the air, those were actually tied around their waist as a skirt over this costume that they have, the green and the yellow. Those folks, those were tied at their waist. They untied it. They were spinning, 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 untied it until it's up over their head. And I'll give you just a few seconds of them with it up in the air. So there they are spinning. Now, this is a performance, and at this particular performance, there are as many local Egyptians as there are tourists to attend this, because these Sufis really do go into what they consider to be ecstasy as they do these dances. So it's pretty amazing, and we all have the ability to do that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> And then moving on to the Celtic line, the Oren Moor is the legend that the Oren Moor sang the world into existence. The Oren Moor sang the great song and created the world as we know it. Just like the Celtic knot, the breath came and wove its way around the weaving of the breath into physical manifestation and the mystery and the magic and the song continues on and on. It flows in the myths and the legends of submerged lands in, in sacred places in the world. 
in the mystical sacred springs, in the life-giving cauldrons, in holy grails. This is all from the order and more. And then there's Bridget, the Celtic sun goddess. She comes to activate our solar nature. And much like the sun rising below the Earth's horizon, we know literally the sun doesn't rise, we turn, but we say that the sun is rising. Just like that, what we call the sunrise, she urges us to come out of hiding and to shine our light on the world. She's a goddess of creativity, a goddess of inspiration. She's the goddess of fires and smithworking, ironworking, and crafting, as well as a goddess of poetry, writing, music. But that's not all. Fertility, healing, prophecy, divination. Woo! Bridget covers it all. <laughs> and this is um, a very large sculpture. This is maybe seven or eight feet tall and it's up on a large post. This was created by a friend of mine here uh, where I live in North Carolina, uh, Tecla at Black Mountain Ironworks. And she calls this, she named this Bridget's Fire. Whew. And a beautiful fire it is. And Bridget calls to us to throw our hesitation and our insecurity into the fire and let our true nature come out, our true purpose of being here, finding that and following it. So create your joy, play, dance sing, paint, write, create, be the storyteller, be the storyteller of your life. Wake up and imagine the things that you can do. Boldly fall in love with the rhythm of life. Do it through prayer or song or poetry or creating or building, whatever it takes for you. Let your creativity flow. And I'm going to do a little chanting while you close your eyes, and then I'll ask you to open your eyes. And I'm going to sing a couple of songs for you that uh, were written by a friend of mine, one song for Hattor, one for Bridget. And I'll post uh, Linda's uh, site in the chat in just a few minutes if you're interested in looking at it she sells her song books and her cds so but right now enfold yourself in that hoop of creativity close your eyes close your eyes and let me chant for just a couple of minutes just a little bit as you move yourself into that place of creativity Breathe it in. gently open your eyes and if you have paper and pen nearby you can write this write some things down if you don't just bring them forth in your mind and just take a minute to write a prayer of gratitude or a two or three line poem write the title of the book that you're creating in your head or write down your next creative project and as you do that, I'm going to sing this song for Hattor and one for Bridget. 
The beauty of your face glitters when you rise. Oh, come in peace. One is drunk at your beautiful face. Oh, gold the beauty of your face glitters, glitters when you rise. Oh, come in peace. Oh, come in peace. Gold hatter. <clears throat> and for Bridget. Bridget, gold red woman, Bridget, flame and honeycomb, Bridget, lead me home. You are a branch in blossom. You are a branch in blossom. You are my bright, precious freedom. Bridget, lead me home. Bridget, lead me home. Bridget, gold red woman. Bridget, flame and honeycomb. Bridget, son of womanhood. Bridget, lead me home. Bridget, lead me Ah, so let me, uh, let me copy that link in case you're interested in, um, whoops, let me, there we go, I can catch it there and um, stop sharing my screen. Well, let me pop over to chat. So if you're interested in that music, this is uh, Linda Metzner's site that you can go to. And um, before, I, I know we want to do a little, a little closing here, um, but also, and I know that you have it on your website, but I'll pop my website in here too. Um, yeah. So um, any, anyone, any, Comments we've got just uh, just a minute or so, I think, Jen. Do we have a minute or so to Yeah, we have about we have about five minutes. So but um Peggy, thank you. Like it's always um fascinating to learn all these different ways these different archetypes show up in our life and the winds and the directions and how nice to just take a few moments and I love the idea of building the Phoenix, even um physically. Now I think that might be one of my creativity projects, um, yeah. you know, to take these little wooden sticks and make a phoenix and do that mm -hmm. as a physical thing. Yeah, this this is a painting that I did. Actually, the, my journey with the phoenix, I mean, I'd heard of the phoenix my whole life, but my journey with the phoenix came when my husband died 10 years ago and um, really deep grieving and long, long process. But the Phoenix was part of that journey of rising. And um, I, I did some, some work um, with a, a Chinese acupuncturist and um, emotional work. And laying on the table one day, I realized I was flying. And I, I, I immediately connected that to the work I'd been doing with the Phoenix. And so I rose from the ashes and, and began to live again. And that's 10 years ago. <laughs> 
So, yeah. And it's always a rising and a falling, though, isn't it? It's always a uh, yeah. fall, we get up, we burn away, we stand up again. And we yes, up. absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And just before we take questions, I, I just, I know you have a free gift that you're offering. Do you want to tell people about it? Um, I have um, I have a couple of things actually um, on on the website. You there's a link um, to on on Jen's um, website for this conference. There's yeah. a link. To my Event schedule page has all of them. Um, and if you go there um, with the particular link that that's on that site, you'll go directly to my meditation page, and you can uh, get the gift of a, a guided meditation there. Um, the other thing that that you can do if you go directly to my just the website mothersacredtours.net, you're going to end up on the page uh, of my moon ceremonies. And on May the 16th, we have a full moon and a lunar eclipse. We had a solar eclipse with the new moon. Now we have a full moon with lunar eclipse. And I will do ceremony on May the 16th. And the link for that is um, is on that, that page. Yeah. Thank you, Peggy. Um, just to sort of, uh, I, I want people to be able to share freely and, and come on camera if they want to. 